family is known for its luggage carrying solutions brand VIP as well as its office furniture brands Ergo. Preeti Vyas design Miss caught up with the leading ladies of the family who call the shots on all aspects of the business. Listen in on their conversation. Designomics is all about profiting from design, but that is if you've invested in design. Today with me are three wonderful ladies, to one family, who have all in their own way invested in design, design as a business tool, design as a management tool, and also advocated design. Welcome to Designomics, Geeta, the old friend, Aparna, her daughter, and Radhika. Radhika, you have recently taken on the mantle of handling the VIP brand and you have been to Oxford and Harvard, you've done your MBA there and you have returned to manage this old iconic brand and I know that you have integrated a lot of design thinking into the management as well as the, uh, the, the craft and skills of designing of, of the product itself into, into your business. Tell us a little bit about the journey of VIP. So, design has been critical to the journey of VIP right from the beginning. VIP industry started in the 70s as a plastics manufacturer, uh, like many other Marwari businesses at the time. And uh, at that point, my father had the vision to see that being a brand was going to generate a much more long-term sustainable business um, than being any kind of plastic or commodity producer and he really created the VIP brand in the 70s at that point launching new products that were not available in the Indian market and at the center of these new products was a, a design philosophy of creating something that was great quality, great form, great substance and style. Uh, VIP continued that journey as it became a larger company, more professional and in the mid 90s uh, VIP launched a product called Elanza, which at the time won several international design patents. And Elanza was a breakthrough product for India, I think, because it expanded VIP's distribution to international markets, including, um, for example, being retailed in Selfridges. And the beauty of this product was that it was actually selling based on its design. At that point, VIP was not heard of brand in international markets, even though it was a market leader in India. And it was uh, precisely the design, the patents, the functionality of this product that wanted that international distribution. And this design was made for VIP, it was commissioned by... VIP. Yes, in fact it was done by um, a designer who started it as a student project and was recruited full time by VIP and it took several years from that project, from the beginning ideation to final commercial production. And VIP continued to invest in that designer and that design as a proprietary um, intellectual rights in keeping that design so it really showed about a company an Indian company then investing in design that way was not so common perhaps the way it is now and then VIP continued that journey uh, in 2003 VIP moved its design studio from Nasik to Mumbai and uh, from that point onwards the head of design always reported to the managing director of the company uh, again, I think this is unusual amongst Indian yes. companies where often the head of design reports to or the head of manufacturing. Yeah, in Japan they do actually, you know, they, uh, all the Japan design house, uh, uh, large industrial houses, business houses have uh, design studios and they report to senior management. Gita, you know, you are really uh, uh, a thinker, a strategist and, uh, you know, you have implemented really design thinking earlier on into the way you have approached your business, the way you approach your publishing business, the way you approach pretty much everything. I'd really like you to talk about how that has influenced Ergo. Well, I did inherit a company which right from its inception had a world-class designer to design its products. Uh, the table you're sitting on is, uh, is being crafted after many, many hours, many hundreds of hours of design. Uh, so. Um, you walk into a company uh, which already has a, a high tradition of uh, being engaged in design and then you, uh, hopefully I push the envelope a little forward. Uh, I'm, uh, I grew up at a time uh, when green was uh, always important. I mean, uh, I schooled in the 60s and uh, at that time I you know, taking flower power to a different level, <laughs> uh, but, um, but definitely uh, for me, and uh, perhaps a little bit of uh, being a frugal Marari, uh, 
<laughs> so the whole concept of let's not have waste. So these two um, perhaps have influenced me in, um, in um, the way I look at design. And uh, at Elko, uh, that's, mean, uh, that's meant a quite a shift, uh, a shift in the strategy. And so there's a much greater alignment uh, between corporate strategy, marketing strategy, sales strategy, and it's led by design. So um, also, I mean, um, there's something called lead. Uh, which is used by buildings, and it was a start. Uh, it was a, a movement which started in the U.S., uh, which uh, looks at uh, how can uh, buildings be more energy efficient, uh, how can they be less wasted uh, in energy. So both sides, both uh, both in terms of using less resources and wasting uh, less uh, material, and uh, that has caught on. And uh, being in the furniture business, we started looking at like how can we get customers to get lead points. So this is important because uh, that can actually make a financial difference. I think it's very interesting that you've actually uh, uh, adopted design thinking, uh, not just into the product for the consumer, but design across every interface from the, the, the process of manufacturing and so on, and how obviously not only does it uh, is not just a return on investment for the planet, for the business, and I would imagine also is a unique positioning for, for our the customers. Brand for the customers as well. For our customers. The ROI on the customer is what I really want to stress. Yes. We help the customer get that. Exactly. And I think that really the real, the sort of complete ecology of, of how, you know, the design ecology meeting the business ecology and everybody profits from it. And that is truly fantastic, you know. I'd like to touch upon the, uh, the other role two of you have, have uh, uh, taken on, especially um, has, uh, uh, is now part of advocating design aggressively. You are, you know, you are a, des a design strategist in your own right, thinker in your own right, and you've propagated design thinking, especially from the perspective of businesses. One of the things I've learned during my research is that design is not really uh, a whims or a fancy or anything just purely aesthetic, but it's actually a huge uh, avenue for economic development. And if you take um, a few countries in particular like Japan, the Netherlands and the UK, it's always been associated with points of great economic development for all of these countries. So whether it was the Industrial Revolution in the UK or in the Netherlands in the 1920s and 30s when they were getting into a more uh, modern and um, we looked at you know, modern versions of socialism. This was a very big part of the government investing in design to improve public life for all its citizens. And in, again, Japan, as you yourself know, and have, have traveled and visited and we've discussed it, um, with the whole um, mark of good design and you know, making that uh, a really a, a, a tool for economic development for the country and building industry and giving confidence to industry. Design at various stages has been as much a policy or a public policy and an economic and political initiative as it has been an initiative by a few companies to, you know, improve their... When you're talking about India emerging and becoming, uh, you know, this mega power that, that everybody talks about, you know, but it has to be on the back of design thinking, design management, design values, understanding how the design ecology can actually contribute across all these interfaces. And I also think India has the opportunity to set a new paradigm for design because yes. we've, there's been a lot of discussion about frugality and, you know, India is about frugal innovation, mm -hmm. which is important. But I think actually what sets India apart is the fact that it's plural mm -hmm. and that we have a diverse society which which means a lot of people. So you're actually looking at, I think, design for plurality is, is, is a very powerful concept where you've got scale, cost and diversity. So essentially whenever you're putting together any product or service, you have to make it scalable for a large population. You have to obviously make it affordable because that is what defines uh, the, the vast majority of our population and also make it diverse. So which is a, which is a challenge as you, you, you as a designer would know that it's, you know, it's easy to roll out one expensive product or you know, um, mass versions of the same product. But here you have to provide options and do it at a low cost and do it uh, for a large population. So Fantastic. I think that you've really touched upon so many wonderful aspects of design, design management from a strategic level to the various crafts and skill sets and, you know, whether it's, it's uh, enhancing the, the ergonomic value, enhancing the safety, safety value to the consumer. But also the fact is that you advocate design, that you are design thinkers, all of you. And really, I'm very happy that, that you belong to this design tribe that I'm part of. So welcome to the tribe. Thank you so much for being part of Designomics. Thank you.
I'm thank you, Preeti. This is the first time we've done a story with all three of us together, <laughs> and uh, you've given us a really nice opportunity to have some fun. Thank you. It's been a complete delight interviewing all of you. Really. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. With that, it's a wrap on Logo this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got any feedback for us. Please write into us. Our Twitter and Facebook IDs are flashing on your screen. You can even email us at logo at utvmoney.com. Next week, please do catch our Year Ender special where we bring you the best and worst of 2010. Until then, goodbye.